One of the big problems in working with Swift data is that the Xcode previews oftentimes don't work or like in my case, I don't have any data to actually see what I'm building here. So in this video, I'm showing you some tricks how to set up Swift data with the preview. This is probably going to be outdated very soon. I'm now working on Xcode 15 beta 5. So maybe what I'm showing you is not going to be so relevant anymore. I'm using here an example that I made for Swift data. It's a little to-do app. You can find the link in the description box. You can also see the tutorial where I worked on this project. I have here a to-do model definition that I want to now see in my previews. And the preview is currently set up with a model container that is in memory. So it generates a new one each time. If I add here elements and then I change something, when the preview refreshes, I again don't have any data. So instead of an empty container that I have here, I also want to set up one that has some data inside. If I want to work with previews where I need to pass in a data instance, things get even more complicated. I'm going to create a new group here for preview helpers. And the first thing I want to work on is setting up a container with some pre-populated data that is still in memory. This new file, Swift file. This is preview sample data. I need to import Swift data and I want to generate an instance of a model container. I need to hold on to this container. I need to have here a strong reference to this instance. Otherwise my preview is going to complain that it doesn't have an active container. So I'm directly here declaring a preview container. This is a model container and we are creating this one here and directly. So now to generate a, a new instance of a model container for this is the schema we want to use and the configuration. As you see, you can also add a migration plan, but this is not what I wanted. I would just use this one. So I only have here one type that I care about, which is to do self model configuration for is in memory too. As I said, this is just for the preview. I definitely don't want to persist anything when I change this. Return this container. Now this can throw creating this container. So I use here a try and actually a do catch block with a fatal error. This is simply because this is for my preview. I definitely want to notice if something is completely wrong. So otherwise I might as well throw here an error and directly tell me what's going on. Failed to create container with error. And then I am going to show here the errors localized description. So we see, okay, this would be now an empty container, but I want to add some data in there. So for this, I want to get the context, which is the containers main context. So this is a, you can access the main context, the context model main context from the container directly, or you can also generate new contexts. And but for my case, I want the main context. And as you see, this is an async call. So I am going to wrap this in a task thing here, add main actor in. So now I have an isolated context. Okay. Then I can now here generate all the instances that I want. In my case, I just wanted to generate a to do. And I'm actually going to add this as an example here to my to do class. Static func example, a to do, let to do, name by milk. I can also set up relationships here, for examples. I have here one, two tags, tag, this is a new tag, with name of hopping, and here one of my custom types. Then I can add the relationship. So this is the to do is tags dot append this new tag. And then I return this to do. Now in my preview data, I can use this example and insert it into contact so it insert. So I'm not, this is the way I add it to Swift data. You can also here generate to do's and also set up here the connections. Go to the then saying this to true. And then again, inserting, this is a done to do. Then again, telling the context to insert this. 
done to do. Okay. Now I have a preview container that I can use in my content view. So instead of here using the initializer model context, I can use the one where I give a container and now I can use my preview container. And two examples are coming up. This is one for buy milk and the other one go to the dentist. I have here two sections, one with all the to do do's and the other one with the ones that are still to be done where the is done property is false. Okay, this is great. I have enough data to test here my queries <laughs> with this filtering and also the sorting. This is enough to work with query and just this list. What I'm still struggling is here, for example, my to do raw where I need to pass a to do. If I use this model container, my preview container, the error message here is fail to find a currently active container for to do. And this is too, because this to do that I generated here is not inserted into context. So it's not in the container. So it's not part of the Swift data system. And this is getting a little bit complicated because as you saw, I need to use this async await things. So we need to find a way of when to call this, when to insert this, depending on how the preview is managing this. And so as a small example of the strategy we are going for, I'm going to create here a helper view to do raw helper where I would again use a query to do this. This is an array of to do. And here I could say if let to do is my to do is first. So now I have a to do that I can use here for this to do row that is in a context because this is how I, we got this I need to import here Swift data. I show here text, no data. Now, if I use this here for my preview, you see, we have one preview going very convenient, but this is kind of annoying because I don't want, always want to write this helpers or this wrappers. I want to make this more generic of just work with any model type that we have. So this is what we're going to do in a second one where I create a container view that fetches whatever type we are working with at query and then returns me just the first one that then here uses the view that we are providing. So there's a bit of generics involved now. This is in this case a Swift UI view and I'm calling this model preview. Okay, for this one, I don't use the preview. I definitely should import Swift data. Okay. I need to work with two generics. One for the model type, I want to make generic. This is specific for to do. I want to also use it for everything else. And the other generic is for the view we are testing here. This is the other generic. Going back. So we generate, uh, we're adding here two generics. One is the model, which is the persistent model. This is the Swift data protocol. And then content for a view. This is my view that we wanted to test. So the view that we are going to test is with a, at var content where I am returning the model. That's what I'm fetching for my query. So I pass it down to the sub view we are testing. Uh, this is the model thing. And this is then expecting a view in return. Now we can write here an init with an escaping. So this is model returning my generic type content and adding here at view builder. If you don't get most of it, it's no problem. You can just reuse this. Then I need to generate another <laughs> level of abstraction. So this is the main content view struct preview content view. The main reason why I add this because if I add <laughs> in here, because in here I can now generate this queries, private var models of this model. But in order to have something inside, it needs to have a container. That's why I can add here the model container, my preview container for my preview content. And actually I need to also pass here this content, this content. Okay. Again, so here, because I am adding my container, it has data that it can fetch. So then when I use in this sub view, the add query, it has some data. So in here, I can finally write the code. Now this is similar to before they had here this query and I'm just getting the first one in this query that I then return to the content we, we asked for. So if let model 
this is my model first. I can then generate this content and pass the model instance. And else we can now show a placeholder. Something super new would be the content unavailable view. Could not load model for previews with an X mark. In a lot of cases, this is not directly there because as you remember, I had to do this with this task. So one thing that did the sample project is to add here a task to initially hide this view. In order to initially change something, I need to have a state private var wait weighted to show issue false. So here I can say task to just wait a little bit to sleep before doing this. Try wait task sleep for seconds for one wait one second before you show this error message or this error view way to show issue is true and then i can use this for the opacity if i waited long enough then just show this opacity of one otherwise you're hiding this in the beginning ah it's try await so this rather complex nest this structure is just there so that i can set up my container correctly that i can fetch Swift data that is already in the context or attached to a container that I can use then to, to pass it down to a view that actually needs a proper one. Okay, after all this lengthy discussion, you can just reuse this going down my to do raw model preview with this content. You see here it returns me something that is a persistent model. And in this case, I want to have a to-do that I can use for my to-do raw and just pass this down. It's then here, when you pass it, we're inferring the type. Okay, great. My preview is still working. I have here one to-do. This is actually the one that I generated. The one annoying issue is that here I'm fetching them and I'm just taking the first one in this array. So sometimes it's depending on what's going on. If you add a lot of sample data in this preview container, it might also switch between different data points. Not really sure how to fix this yet, but at least you have something to see in your previews. Okay, so this is the very shorthand form. I don't need to have the helper here anymore. Then I can do the same in my to-do detail view. This is the preview model preview with a to-do, passing this to-do. And again, my preview is working. As you see, this is a little bit more complex to set up, but you can just reuse the file we generated. This is very generic. This doesn't depend on the type of data you have. The only one you need to change here is adding your own types and setting up these in memory container with your model definitions here. This helps you to both work with a query where you only need to attach here this model, model context that we generated for the preview. And otherwise, if you need to have an instance that you're passing, you can use this model preview container. This is a wrap. I hope this is going to help you in working with Swift data. I'm going to update this in case something changes. So if you don't want to miss this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video and share if it is working for you, or just tell me when things are breaking which is probably going to happen quite soon again, but at least with the setting this up, you can see the importance of the container and how things are connected. Have fun building projects with Swift data. Until next time, happy coding.